Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host, UK Kachidori. Hey, hey, welcome back. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered how right at an optimum level they seem to get a lot of things done with ease and they're always doing more than you do and wonder how do they do that? If you're a business owner and you've wondered that, like I did for many years, you're in for a treat because my guest here today is going to show you how you too can operate at peak performance so that you get things done quicker, faster, and you can help as many people as you want to do. And my guest on the show today is Matthew Blair. Matthew, thank you so much for being on the show here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm excited about the conversation we have today because we are going to be talking about this very important subject, which I think everybody needs to know. Now, Matthew, I know you are a thought leader when it comes to consciousness, spirituality, mindfulness, and peak performance. You have a global audience and have been featured on so many top podcasters. I was checking you out on YouTube earlier on. Uh, a great guest that comes on your podcast, uh, and you cover some really, really important subjects. So is there anything else I've missed out on your bio here that you'd like our audience to know about you? Really shy. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's it's really diverse. Um, I'll try to keep it short, but for me, I was always very interested in human potential and traveling the planet. And so my studies and adventures have taken me to 25 countries. I've trained with um, several different indigenous elders. I've trained with uh, 34th generation Shaolin masters. Uh, I've been into the Great Pyramids with the Science Foundation exploring what was going on with ancient history. And then my podcast has over 450 episodes with uh, leaders in self-help, personal development, spirituality, and consciousness exploration. And so for me, it's just been a pursuit of what am I capable of and how do I achieve my highest performance and highest potential and also exploring things like enlightenment and spiritual living. And then also what's possible for the planet? How do we get to a planet that makes sense where we have peace and we have harmony and we are moving towards a planet that looks like Atlantis or some this some amazing world where we all cooperate and it's not like that um, right now. And so those have been my two endeavors. And so there's a lot of stories in between, but we'll just keep it short there or else I'll be here all day. Amazing. And you've got some amazing testimonials as well of the people that have experienced training, your teaching. Uh, and I'd love you to share maybe one or two of some amazing results you've got for people who have followed uh, what you do. Yeah. So for me, my career started in um, sports and I learned a lot about peak performance and mindset and flow state from being a martial artist. And so I was working with Olympic and pro athletes. And so one of my pro athletes, uh, he reached out because he fell on a front flip on his motorcycle. And uh, he said, hey, I want to land a front flip on a motorcycle. And he also wanted to do some variations. And so over just one session, I showed him a few tools that he could use. And in three weeks, he landed the front flip. And three weeks after that, he landed the world's first front flip heel clicker on a motorcycle. And then three weeks after that, he landed the world's first front flip Superman on a motorcycle. It wasn't even practicing in real life. He was going through the visualization practices that I had showed him. And um, he was able to apply that and, and do something that has never been done on the planet. And with the podcast and the people that I coach now, it's mostly around creating and architecting your life deliberately. How do we set that goal? So that athlete has a very specific performance goal. Sometimes it's winning the Olympics or um, in, in Brody Carmichael's case, it was landing the strip that had never been done. But when we're thinking about our lives, it's more complex, but we can use these same tools. And so the best thing that I do for, for my clients is in a very quick time, show them how to architect their life from a place of meaning, of purpose, of fulfillment, so that each and every day when they're engaged in that vision, um, they have the energy and the will to push through all of the challenges that arise from creating your life deliberately, rather than taking the easy path that's cut out for you where it's known and it's guaranteed, but it doesn't light you up. It's not who you truly are. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I'm hoping that we can create such dramatic stories for the listener here today. Uh, that's why we have you on the show. 
before we, we move into the greater parts of the interview, what's your understanding about peak performance? Is it available to everybody? Yeah, so uh, 100%, it's available to everybody. And now with the popularization of flow state, you know, I was studying flow state in my teenage years and also was learning about it through martial arts and, and it was called various things. Um, but everybody wants the quick fix and I want the quick fix too. And there is tools that you can use for that things like a trigger. So this is where you would you would set a uh, external stimulus that creates an internal response. And so we would use this for my athletes. So it'd be something unique, like maybe um, you squeeze your thumb or your left wrist, or you do something and you can create an emotional state. Now, all of these things are helpful and they work, but what I like to share to people is that flow state or peak performance is earned. So let's say you are going to the gym for the first time and you're very out of shape and you know, you're overweight and you haven't been eating good and you don't exercise. You're not going to go into the gym and peak performance. You're going to just show up to the gym and do something. So over time, the peak performance is earned through you showing up in your consistency. And so in the book that I wrote for athletes years ago, that applies to entrepreneurs, musicians, and everyone. Um, there's a um, some pillars that I laid out that you can think about when you are moving towards your goal. And some of those pillars are dedication. You know, why are you doing what you're doing? Focus. Do you know how to focus when you're training? Meditation. Do you know how to clear your mind? Visualization. Do you know how to intend and project where you want to go? Beliefs. Do you understand and know what your limiting beliefs are? And do you know how to install positive beliefs? Because you can do that. It's very easy. Simulation. Um, how can you simulate the goals that you're trying to create? Fitness and nutrition. Taking care of the body also um, changes the way you think. It changes your neur neurology. It changes your energy and goal setting. And so if you think about all of those things, and then I put Zen in the middle or enlightenment or, or peace or contentment. This is the journey. And if we can be whole and content and harmonious and full of self-love and worth in the journey, we're really operating in peak potential because it's always a journey. If you want to go to the Olympics, right, that's going to be maybe a 5, 10, 15-year journey. You can think about Conor McGregor. He would be in Ireland, and he would say, I want to make it to the UFC, and I want to be a two-time champion. How many years would he have to operate in the process of peak performance to get his first title fight? and in which he achieved his goals. And so if he wasn't whole and content and harmonious and empowered the entire duration, he would have been in misery the entire duration as he aimed for his goals. And so when we consider all of those factors um, in our process and know we're moving towards a meaningful goal, I feel like that's when we're operating in peak performance because there's ebbs and flows and things that happen. Um, but those are great pillars of understanding of how we are operating. Amazing, amazing. You have dropped some amazing bombs right there uh, when you were talking about how you show up, what is happening before you show up to the gym. You know, I've never heard it that way before. Uh, so let's explore more. So once we have that understanding of what peak performance is and what it takes, how do we get ourselves to be ready and be intentional, like you say, to start living in that state? Would you explore that for us? Sure. So the easy thing to think about is your why. You know, what is your motivation? The root motivation. Most of us are motivated through ego, and ego isn't a bad thing. The ego is your identity of what your preferences are. But when it's the false identity, it's doing it for some sort of external validation. It's not your true self. So you're not going to have that will. And so will is a very interesting thing. I've also studied how people do supernatural things. So one of those stories, you ever hear those stories of uh, women being able to lift the car and their child's underneath? Yeah. Well, when, so it's, it, these, these stories have happened. And so there's a great book called The Autobiography of a Yogi. It's a very fascinating story. And Yogananda, who wrote the book, he also wrote another story about scientific affirmations. And so when I'm teaching an athlete, I would say, okay, say the affirmation that you want to land this trip trick, right? Maybe it's that double backflip or the front flip. Well, when you're working with an entrepreneur, you would say the affirmation of how you want to build your business. How do you envision that business? What does it look like? How does it help, right? You would go through the affirmations there. Well, or you're going to the gym or any other thing. Well, Yogananda says that um, the reason why people don't um, attract or their affirmations don't work is because there's no spiritual will. There's no, there's no energy behind it, right? So if you think about saying the affirmation of, I would like to be successful in this business, and I say, why? Is it so you get a car and a house, which we need, right? But that's not a real powerful will. 
But if it is something that you're made to do, that you're inspired to to do, that helps other people, you're going to have much more will. And so if you think about the will that a mother would have to lift that car and how powerful that would be, and you can bring that back to why you do what you do. So let's say it's your health, for example. You could say, I'm going to be healthy because I want to live long for my kids. You know, I want to have energy for my business. I want to create a business so I can create employees. And what we do um, helps our community, right? And, and when you know what those whys are, then you can apply all those other things. So that's the foundation. And that's what I think people really aren't taught to do is to go back and get really clear on why they're doing what they do. Why is it important? And then move that into a frame of how can you help other people? And when you do that, I feel like you are combining um, and, and aligning with natural law or universal law or any ancient esoteric mystical technique you could ever learn about, law of attraction, anything like that, the quantum field, that's how you align with it because nature is cooperative. And so if we just need to align with that, so we let go of some of the things that would be hindering us, but we align with things that are more meaningful, more powerful, and I think we have a more beautiful and genuine experience. It's amazing. I love that you mentioned the why that in my training, we teach the seven level deep of how you discover your why. And at the bottom of that, once you keep on going in that, you will uncover the true driver as to why you're doing that. And if it is bigger than you, you know, you become unstoppable in going after your dreams. And I'm glad you're touching that because we are on the same page on that one. So having moved and having clarity on why, what else would people need to take on maybe as a first step to going after that, uh, living uh, on purpose or living at peak performance? Yeah, that's another great question. So, you know, I think it's very important to understand what your values are. Right. And also knowing that it's not going to be clear right away to take the step that that you need to take right where you are today. So the first step is going to be reflection and asking yourself really important questions like, um, if I had a million dollars every single day, what would I do with my life? Um, if I were retired right now and can do anything with my time, what would I do? If uh, I could do anything and not fail, what would I do? What are my curiosities? What are my passions? And as you start to uncover these things, wherever you are in the process, whether you're right at the beginning or you're further along, like for me, I feel like I've been in the path of live, living my life purpose for many years, but it unfolds and it gets bigger as my skills develop, as, my, as I get feedback from the universe, as I accumulate different knowledge and experiences, I see new options to explore, but I'm kind of choosing where to steer the boat, so to speak. And one of the examples I give is most people design their life by default, meaning they don't design it. Whatever's kind of easy and whatever's safe, they're going to go do that thing, right? And there's nothing wrong with that um, because we want to, we need to eat, we need to do all these different things. But you can choose to create your life deliberately, which is a little bit more challenging. And there's no set path for that. And so all we really can do is do that step that's right in front of us. So once we are clear with our why, um, what's most important to us, what our curiosities are, we have to go ahead and take that next step. And then we imagine that future. And then what, what can we do today? And then you can do things like starting to install the beliefs you would need. What kind of person would you need to be to um, you know, win a gold medal, right? What would your beliefs need to be? What kind of person would you need to be to create this business you're envisioning? What beliefs would you need to have? And then you start installing those beliefs and you can do it through affirmations, through self-hypnosis, through visualization, through meditation, through visualization, all uh, various wonderful techniques and just making sure that you're showing up every day doing that next thing on the task. What's the priority? What can I do today? And doing it with a jump in your step, enjoying the process because you might be in a job where you are a 95, but if you just added 30 minutes each day, an hour each day, for a year or two years, you're going to be in a totally different trajectory and you'll see that opportunity come. The universe will work with you to create that opportunity and bridge for you to evolve into a more authentic version of yourself. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. If you're just joining us, we are talking about peak performance and I certainly want you to download this and uh, share it with others. And if you can leave a review as to how much value you're getting out of this, I would appreciate that. And at the bottom of this recording, you can access uh, Matthew's uh, direct link so you can reach out to uh, him. Matthew, coming back to you, my friend, uh, let's talk about the people that try what we're talking about, but they fail. 
uh, what have you discovered to be the main hindrance that stops people from truly going for it? That's a really fantastic question. And part of this process is it's challenging and you're going to need endurance and you're going to need to be able to overcome massive challenges. So the example that I'd love to give is that when I was in China, I was training with 34th generation Shaolin monks and I wanted to see what was possible. And I saw that these people could break stone and brick. What I had learned over the years of studying is that some people trick you in the fields of uh, martial arts or personal development or whatever the case is, consciousness. Um, even some of the people out there that will say, oh, they can see through blindfolds and things like that. Well, some people I think can actually do that. But a lot of people are actually deceiving you through a magic trick. And I call that black magic. And they do that in martial arts as well. They'll say they're breaking this thing, but they actually make a trick. So they deceive people into believing that they have the powers, um, that, but they don't. And so when I was in China, I wanted to make sure they could, they could actually do this because the master could break stone with two fingers. He could break thicker pieces over his head and every limb. And so I interviewed him and I said, what's the trick? Because I want to immerse myself with the masters to know and be able to separate fact from fiction. Is this legit? Is this possible for a human to do? And so in that interview, um, I asked him three times. And the third time, he started slamming his fingers down on the table because he was wondering why I kept asking the same question. And he told me it was years Eight years of conditioning the fingers. Hard qigong is when you go outside to the trees, and they actually had dent holes in the trees from the students and masters poking the trees with their fingers to build up the conditioning necessary. The second element to that was qigong, understanding the internal energy system of the body, their spirit, being able to direct their will, direct their consciousness, kind of like the mother flipping the car example. How could you direct that force, right? And so that those were the two elements that he told me he used. And I said, is this possible for everybody? He thought about it for a moment, and then he answered yes. But he goes, most people would never pursue this path, first of all. So most people will never get on the path where they create their authentic version of their life because it's, it's challenging uh, often. Not always, but it can be challenging. Um, and then the second thing is most people will give up just before they get there. And so that's why perseverance is so important and so underrated. We're so taught about the 10X and how to get it quicker and all the hacks. Well, they might work uh, for a moment, but if you don't have that perseverance, if you don't have that why, if you don't have that grit, um, you know, you're, you're not going to get there. And, and in martial arts, we know this from title fights and, you know, what it takes in the ring where it doesn't go correctly. How do you endure? You know, what are you, and that's why we say, what are you made of? What are you made of? And so that's an opportunity for you to keep going. What are you made of, you know, to, to pick yourself up again and dust yourself off? And I came up, there's a quote I thought that was relevant, and it's from Winston Churchill, and it says, success is going from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. And so sometimes um, that's what we need to do. And I had recently just uh, written an article um, that talked about that, how this process may not be easy. It's going to be the most fulfilling and rewarding thing you ever do, but there are going to be times where it will not be easy and you should not expect it to be. Indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we also believe in the process of having a support, a mentor. You know, one of the things I've discovered in any field I go into, I can do trial and error, but I discover that if I, can, if I figure somebody uh, or figure out who is doing what I want to do and just uh, go and uh, their team, get some knowledge from them, I'll get there much quicker. What's your opinion, you know, when it comes to peak performance? Do people really need somebody to guide them along or they can figure it out by themselves? What would you say? That's a great question. I think that mentors are helpful. I think that we always need to be our own masters first and foremost. So right. be your own teacher to be your own master. Be willing to make mistakes. Now, mentors are incredibly helpful. And one of the smartest things I think I've done in my life is immerse myself around the best. So when I wanted to be the best snowboarder on the planet, I went to Whistler Black Home Canada where the best snowboarders were. When I wanted to be the best martial artist I could be, I trained with professional fighters in Thailand. When I wanted to learn about enlightenment, I went and trained with the um, you know, Buddhist monks uh, that were in Nepal. And I immersed myself in those environments. And so my, my learning was very accelerated. And so 
mentors are invaluable. You just, I think you need to do both. Remember that you're the master first. They're going to guide you. They're going to help you when you fall. They're going to give you strategies and they're going to make it a lot easier than doing it on your own. Um, and then also don't be afraid to fail and really just go for it on your own as well um, and try your own techniques. Always make it your own. And, and Bruce Lee was one of my mentors. Um, not Unfortunately, not in the real world, but I, I watched all his movies and I read all his books. And when he would teach martial arts, he said the same technique isn't going to work for the same people all the time. You need to make it your own. So take what works. And if it works for you, fantastic. Apply it and use it. And if you need to make it your own, make it your own. Make it uniquely you. Make it authentically you. And so I 100% believe in the mentors. I 100% believe in immersing yourself in the environment that's going to be the most conducive for your growth. It's going to accelerate um, your, your growth more than anything else. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So let's talk about uh, business owners for a moment who have a whole lot of things happening in their lives. You know, they have to uh, deal with different uh, people from different levels. But they want to operate at peak performance. And, you know, they are listening to this state and they just want to get started without having to stop what they're doing. They just want something they can incorporate in their daily life right now. What would you suggest they do? Another great question. The first thing that I would do, um, they probably already do this, but when you wake up in the morning, have a good morning routine. Uh, write out what your your critical tasks are. So you're, you're knowing front and center what your critical tasks are. Then I would plan out your month, your, your, your week, your month, and your year. And then also five years. So you have that vision. You have that, that bigger aim of the vision. And then what I would highly recommend is doing a daily visualization of, of where you would like to go. And so whatever your vision is for your business, you just do a five minute guided meditation you make for yourself. And so all you would need to do is use your iPhone or whatever you have and just imagine and create what that would be. So when I'm working with an athlete, it might be, you know, we want to win an Olympic gold and that would be the thing that we would visualize. But then we would also have to visualize the performance that we would need to create in order to achieve the goal. Right? They would have to perform all these tricks. So in the business, it could be, what does that vision look like in five years? Right? What does it look like in a year? What kind of people are you around? And this is where we're adding that visualization process. And this is the biggest thing um, that entrepreneurs and CEOs do not use. They're very often stuck in their heads in all process-oriented tasks. Well, when you go to do a trick like Brody Carmichael did on the, on the, um, on the bike, he's not thinking about every micro task he's fully in the moment he's in flow state when he goes to do that and so if ceos and executives and business uh, people can learn how to utilize this that's when they actually 10x things because they're working with the quantum field they're working with this weird energy that absolutely exists in the world that will give them feedback not only to grow but to grow in an authentic way so sometimes the wins won't just be financial it will be quality of life it could be like just having um the right business partner where your families mesh and you create lifelong friendships like how valuable is that right maybe you make a bit more money make you maybe you make the same money maybe you make more money but when it comes back to value like wow I never even considered that, that all the people that I do business with, I love them. I love their families. I love their kids. I want them to be successful. They're fantastic um, influence, right? I want to send them over to their house for the weekend, right? And then we can trade. So all of these beautiful opportunities, I feel like, um, are so lost in the analytical mind because the analytical mind is crunching numbers because what more money means is more security and safety. It means your kids can eat, you can eat, right? And then the more you have, the safer you are like a squirrel gathering nuts. But sometimes we forget about these very important other things we can add. And so a visualization process, when you start to add that, you're going to start to feel into places where you can really add value to your life and to your team's life in a, in a very profound way. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'll tell you, when I started visualizing at first, a few years ago, it, was, uh, it wasn't a, a, an easy process for me like that. It took uh, a few attempts, but once I got there and managed to quieten my mind uh, and through meditation, it has brought tremendous results. The people I get to do life with right now, sometimes it's like I'm having the deja vu moment. Gosh, what is happening? and it's all coming to pass. So if you're a business owner and you are not doing this already, give it a try. You know, and let us know how you're getting on with this. What we truly want for you is to live your best life now 
and what strategies uh, that Nathan is sharing with you truly helps you to get closer to that, if not right there. Matthew, we're coming toward the end of our time here together, and I know you have been asked a lot of uh, questions around this subject. What are perhaps two frequently asked questions you've come across around this topic? Well, a lot of them is how to get into flow state, right? And the other thing, you know, people always want to know how to get into flow state, and we covered that with, with the model. Right. So understanding that flow state is earned. So if you went into a championship fight and you didn't prepare, you didn't train, you didn't eat right, you didn't visualize. Well, that flow state isn't going to help you. And there's a there's a saying in the Navy SEALs where they say you don't rise to the occasion. You fall to the level of your training. Right. And so, yes, we so we got to understand flow state and peak performance is earned. And so that's why we want to engage in the process, engage in the difficulty, but make it a worthy aim. It's going to be a much more beautiful experience. And then the other question that I get all the time is like, um, you know, how do I find my life purpose? And one of the things I say to people is that it's not an end result. Like when I gave the Conor McGregor example, if he said my life purpose is to be a two-time uh, simultaneous UFC belt holder, he achieved that at 32 or something, at 30, a very young age. So is his life done then or is he still growing and evolving? And so, you know, if we can create a meaningful direction in our lives, it's just going to continually expand and unfold, but only we'll know if we're doing that in a way that's deliberate and congruent with our soul, with our value, with our heart, and in cooperation with the environment. And that way, at the end of your journey, um, you'll be, you know, because we all look at our own mirrors, you know, and I've done a lot of spirituality and I've uh, trained with a lot of different elders and read a lot of different spiritual teachings. And really, it just comes down to being honorable, you know, being an honorable person within yourself. Are you listening to yourself? It is not that complicated, but it's very, very um it's very easy to know in your inner world. And so honoring that, I feel like, is, is very important. And that's when you start to engage in the mystery and the beauty of the world. And you, you see life in a little bit of a different way. And it ends up being more fulfilling. So there's a lot to be learned from the indigenous cultures of the world that have kind of long been forgotten. And as an interesting side note, the three elders that I trained with all had a 20,000-year oral history. <laughs> not 2,000, not 3,000. They were all different people. They didn't know it. They were three different indigenous leaders, a 20,000-year oral history. And uh, they had a level of contentment, of peace, and of integrity that I, I do not often see in our uh, kind of West, Western or, or what you'd say first world uh, nations. Amazing, amazing. For those who want to carry on learning uh, from you or to perhaps uh, use some of your services, where can they find you, Matthew? Yeah, they can come over and check me over at uh, mattbelair.com. There are so many fantastic podcasts. Uh, they can check out the Quantum Heart Hypnosis. This is making guided visualization easy and also connecting you to your will easy. If you want to connect with your life purpose, uh, that's also is not as complicated as you think. The Soul Compass is in the membership program. You can go through that. And if they want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, they can also um, you know, join the mastermind or some of the one-on-one -on -one coaching I do. And you know, a lot of the people I work with, they say, hey, you know, I want to either, you know, upgrade and, and go in the peak performance route and we do but every time we do once we connect to more meaning right it's all of these things they've never considered like i said like well what kind of families are you around what kind of business are you doing right and we can unfold and expand from there and the more meaning that's added in the more beauty and uh you know possibility that that occurs you know and also more contentment too and i think that that's often important in in the peak performance right could you come second place and some of the work that i ended up doing was for athletes who finished their pro career and then they felt like there was nothing for them to do but but at the end of the day um the athlete didn't you know they weren't good enough when they were a gold medal right like it's not good enough anyways, right so we, we gotta come back to those fundamentals and really um, create, figure out a way to have a, a connection with ourselves and also our community and environment. Amazing, absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. There you have it, guys. If you really want to improve your life around this area, you know where to go. Matthew, final words to those uh, who are listening and uh, who, you know, perhaps have struggled or perhaps who are just getting started, but very optimistic about the journey ahead. Uh, and then we'll close here. For sure. Well, one of the quotes stuck with me. I can't remember who said it, but uh, most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10. And so once you connect to something that you won't change direction for, that you would give yourself 10 years to endure, to create, 
now you're on the right track. Just be in peace and contentment because over time, if you if you study successful people that didn't get a handout, that you know didn't get a leg up, it takes 10 years to kind of get onto that level of mastery. So just like Conor McGregor coming out and working construction, not having any money, getting his first fight, that's a long journey. So just understand that it is a journey and be content along the way. And then realize if you do 10 years and then 20 years and then 30 years in a direction that you have created, you're going to be at mastery level. So when I'm 40, I'll have 10 years of podcasting. Um, you know, I'll have 30, 40 years of testing personal development and, and testing all these different things. So just let the journey of mastery unfold. Just make sure that you're putting time towards your curiosities, your interests, and give your, and allow yourself the apprentice phase. And if you're at the mastery phase, connect to other masters and figure out how you can share that with the next generation and also create the biggest positive impact for everyone in your community in the world. This has been absolutely amazing. There you have it. Guys, uh, we would love to hear back from you. Reach out to Matthew, reach out to us, uh, and also rate uh, this uh, recording on iTunes. There will be a link below, and uh, give us some feedback as to uh, what you've learned today and how you're going to apply this in your life. It all brings joy to us when we know that this information is transforming you. And again, we are on Clubhouse Monday to Friday. Uh, you just uh, go in there, look for your Kai Business Show, and I bring you some amazing guests uh, so that you will get tons of value in addition to uh, what you're already getting on the podcast. So I look forward to hanging out with you in there. By the way, I answer your questions directly should you have any questions in there. So I'm super excited about what's happening there. Matthew, it's been a pleasure having you. We would love to have you back at some point, maybe sharing uh, some other aspects of your journey because uh, you bring fire, man. You, you, you know how to do these things. So thank you for being here today. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. And talk to you again very soon, guys. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Yukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.yukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistant service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. 